folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and this is my radioactive hotel room. As you folks know, my station is anti-protons on radiationnetwork.com. I'm the Northern Virginia station. The normal readings you see from my station are about 38 to 40 counts per minute. This is in line with most of the stations near me. Although for the last eight or so days, around August, what is it, 9th through 18th of 20, uh, 2012, of course, you might have noticed my readings doubled to as high as 80, 90 counts per minute, even 105. The chart you're seeing right now is what my chart usually looks like. You usually see me as a circle on a United States map if you don't own the software and you're just looking at the web page. The chart you see here is what my chart looked like after I moved into the hotel where I stayed for eight days. Here's a slightly different view of the same basic data. And this one's a little bit more explosive as it comes at you, so I, I, I guess perhaps this one's misleading because it's so, you know, much more red and flashy. But what it boils down to is I had about double the readings. And no, there were no helicopters flying in formation, no aliens, no conspiracy stuff, no airplanes spraying stuff from the sky. I just had higher readings. I wonder why. It's, it's been a long day at work, and I'm very tired. Um, here I am holding my camera. But I, I've been trying to get a hold of um, uh, some good video footage of all of this to show all of you exactly what I've been dealing with the last couple of days. Um, about eight days ago, I entered into a hotel room for a work-related assignment. And um, that would be why I have the shirts and all the dress-up stuff here. Anyhow, um, I took my Geiger counter, put it on the table, turned it on, and immediately I noticed that it was ticking pretty hot. So it's pretty low right this moment. It's been up as high as 100 counts per minute. The bathroom is one of the lowest places in the entire room. Which is weird, because usually it's the highest place, because if you get close to the granite... Watch. And that's pretty common. Granite's usually pretty hot. You expect this. Very expected. What wasn't expected is that the actual apartment, is, the actual hotel room itself, I keep calling it an apartment for some reason, I don't know why, the hotel room itself averaged 75 counts per minute. As you can see, we're hitting 94, but that's the granite. And you can hit higher, but of course it's granite. But you don't expect readings like this in the rest of the hotel. Look, there's my horribly unmade bed. Let's see what it looks like in my bed. A place you would hope to be pretty low in radioactivity, right? It's your bed, right? You're sleeping there, you don't want high radioactivity. Now I'm on the eastern coast, specifically in Virginia. A place not really known for having backgrounds higher than maybe 20 to 30 counts per minute on this type of pancake unit. On a smaller uh, Geiger Mueller tube, little tiny ones like you find in Gamma Scouts and stuff, I can be as low as 14 counts per minute. But not here, not in my hotel room. Let's move over to another place. Doesn't matter. Same readings. So the question is, what is it? Well, I stepped outside and took readings, and they weren't particularly hot. So I've been able to rule out that there's anything in this environmental area, like in the air or anything like that. Also, the readings are persistent. I measured them for days on radiationnetwork.com. I've been here for eight days. Virtually no change. What could it be? The highest readings that I get are from here in the middle of the living room. The hotel has kind of a living room built into it. It's actually a nice hotel. It's like a little kitchenette and everything like that. And as you can see, the readings are reasonably high. And you're kind of going on my word here because, I mean, obviously I could have something under the table and be faking it. I mean, I could show you what's under the table. 
but you know that doesn't matter because it could still be faked and everything so you're kind of going on my word here but I'm also not showing you readings that are tremendously high either so I guess all I can do is really just kind of show you what I found what could it be why do the readings vary like this what is in the room well I finally figured it out here we are on top of the refrigerator on top of the refrigerator readings are about as they've been 70 80 but let's move this up against the plaster ceiling what happens when we're against the plaster ceiling it's not a massively higher reading but overall my average goes up heavily Depending if I get on the right spot, I can hit over 100 counts per minute. I move just a little bit. I'm pretty sure it's the plaster. I'm not 100% sure of this. But I'm pretty sure of it. Because when I take the unit, put it down on a table, it stays high, but over time it will drop down. I mean, it probably will spike a little bit more because it was so high, but if I give this like about five or ten minutes, it'll drop. So what's in the plaster? Pieces of plaster break off from the ceiling and they fall. And they can be found on the tables in various little locations. Here's a nice little piece. And with um, many, many people here that are with me from the same group, I'm able to scour each one of the rooms, finding each one of these little pieces that could be like in a corner or someplace in the floor. There's not only a couple per room little pieces like this but I've assembled them together to um, test when I get back home using gamma spectroscopy. It's unfortunate that I couldn't bring a gamma spectrometer with me so that I wouldn't have to take little chips off the floor but these could be easily thrown away so I don't think anybody will miss them. So I've got a Geiger counter and I have a, 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 a hotel room that's radioactive. The question comes down to A is this dangerous? Is it dangerous? Am I in any danger for being here for eight days? Are the people who work here or live here for longer? And B, why is it radioactive? And C, maybe you could also ask what sort of radiation we're we dealing with. I've tested paper against the ceiling. I've tested the Geiger counter against many different surfaces and I, I'm reasonably sure that I'm dealing with alpha beta, and gamma. But, because of the reasonable uniformity of readings throughout the uh, hotel room, I believe that I'm mostly in a gamma field. Mostly gamma, maybe x-rays, because there's, there's usually x-rays associated with gamma. By the way, I've had a really long day if I sound kind of tired. Um, I believe it's gamma for the most part, but I believe there's also alpha and beta involved as well. Although I can't prove this with a Geiger counter, not easily, especially with not such uh, pervasive readings all over the place. If they were localized, then I could test them, you know, paper, aluminum, the whole usual method. But these are just way too pervasive and all over the place. Now, secondly, is it dangerous? I would probably say no, but then again, yeah, I know I'm going to get attacked over that. But reasonably speaking, I'm experiencing somewhere just a little bit higher than the background readings in Denver, Colorado. And Denver has one of the lowest cancer rates in the nation, if I do recall. I'm sure I'll be forced to dig up the document to prove that, but whatever. Um, I wouldn't find 100 counts per minute or even the um, 60 counts per minute. I'm actually getting, well, 52, whatever. 
on a pancake guy like Geiger Mueller tube, I wouldn't consider those to be of any major danger, anything to worry about. The only thing to worry about would be the possibility that, that something could be getting into my body. I could, I could be ingesting the dust from the plaster or something like that. And if we're talking about uh, the uranium decay chain, which is my theory, although I don't actually actually have any factual you know data to back that up, but it's, it's kind of a gut instinct of theory, if you like. If that is, in fact, the reason, then I wouldn't call it terribly dangerous. You breathe, a, breathe that stuff in all of the time. Right after every rain shower, you're covered in radon washout. I mean, that's been there since the time of the dinosaurs, you know, so whatever. Um, now, if it's something more sinister that I'm not aware of, or some high concentration of something, perhaps it is. Won't know until I look into it with a gamma spectrometer and see for sure. And hopefully I will have had a chance to put that on the vi same video that this is on. Now, last but not least, what is it? I don't know. And I'm going to take the samples back, and I'm going to put them on my gamma spectrometer and run them for a short time and see if I can actually pull out what's in the, 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 the uh, walls here. I'm hoping it's the plaster. What if it's not the plaster? What if, what if it's something else? What if the metal has, you know, something in it? Who knows? Now, if that's the case, and the plaster's totally inert, completely inert, what I might do is in a week or two when I get my Polymaster um, gamma spectrometer, portable handheld gamma spectrometer, I might take that unit and I might come back here and I might actually see if, I mean, I might, I'm, this is being paid for by where I work because, you know, I, I'm doing my professional duties here as a computer scientist, but perhaps I might just pay for my own room and come spend the night here for giggles. This is only three hours away from my house and I might actually test myself with my own equipment and see. God, I wish I had the portable spectrometer with me. I actually thought about going back home, three hour drive, each way, and getting my full spectrometer and lugging the whole damn thing back. It's just so heavy though, and I didn't have time. I've been working like 18 hour days. I mean, look at me, I'm exhausted looking. Now I'm going to go and get myself something to drink, and hopefully in this video I've embedded some of the RadiationNetwork.com stuff. Let me also give you a message for RadiationNetwork.com here. I love RadiationNetwork.com. I'm a proud member, but I'll tell you, every single time anybody is reading over, you know, 40 or 50 counts per minute, everybody goes bananas. There's reports of helicopters flying in the air in formation, chemicals being sprayed from the sky, government cover-ups, blah, 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 blah. Remember the guy in Alabama who had a loose cable and then everybody was saying, like, aliens and cover-ups and all this other crap that wasn't true? Yeah, it gets annoying, so I cut my station off so I would stop getting annoyed, but the reality is I'm just in a radioactive hotel room. So this is Tom from anti-proton.com, and bye-bye. Um, different room.